is the Valley Today. Breaking overnight, a mother and son are reunited after a tense pursuit. It was all caught on camera. Here is the car in question, this white one going down the street. You see the police cars behind it, and that is when the moment happens. That thing that this person's carrying, that's a car seat with a baby in it. A child was in that vehicle when it was stolen in, and in L.A. The mother says that she briefly went inside a convenience store. Moments later, someone took off in the car. Officers did not try a pit maneuver because of the child, but they did use spike strips. And at one point, they say the driver had blown out all four tires. He eventually surrendered, and officers then reunited that little boy with his mother. New this morning, two brothers ages 10 and 14 years old have surrendered to police for the deadly beating of a 73 year old man in Philadelphia. Authorities released this security of video last week showing a group of young people who assaulted James Lambert with a traffic cone. He then fell to the ground and later died from his injuries. The brothers involvement in that incident is not yet clear. 602 on this Tuesday morning. We are waking up to some nice sunshine out there on our sky cam. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Yes, beautiful start here in Fargo. We've got a cloudless sky here and many of us enjoying some clear conditions here this morning. The exception really is the Devil's Lake area where we just saw those clouds that have been making their way through. They won't last. It's not going to be a cloudy day all day long for you in Devil's Lake. 65 degrees there, though. It's 60 in Fargo and Grand Forks at 59. We're 63 in Jamestown, Fergus Falls, Bemidji, both checking in at 57 and went on average out of the west and light up to about 10 miles per hour. So a break after yesterday's windy weather. Here's a look at your radar and satellite map. It's quiet. We've got no rain to show you here. Just those clouds, a hint of them moving through uh, northeastern parts of North Dakota, including the Devil's Lake Basin. So that's an area of cloud cover that will be dropping through. So there might be a couple of hours uh, where you are, where you see some clouds taking over and then they move on and you end up with more sunshine through the morning and into the early afternoon. Some of us, it looks a little bit different coming up here. Fargo will be one of those places that has that cloud cover that briefly moves through. We're looking at temperatures getting into the upper 70s to some low 80s. We'll see that wind return. It turns northwesterly, steady speeds in the teens, gusts getting into some 20s, so not as strong as yesterday. Now, if you are in our eastern viewing area, that's where we could see some afternoon thunderstorms popping, and we're going to talk more about that coming up here in just a couple of minutes. We want to give you that heads up, though, about what's to come. This is your muggy meter here, and we've seen that mugginess come down this morning. You'll notice the difference compared to Monday morning. We're down that comfy to a bit muggy side here the next couple of days, but you see that graph shoot up into that humid uh, category, maybe even steamy as we head into the weekend as well, and that accompanies heat that's going to be on the way. So that combo we know can be very tough. Details on the heat wave and our storm chances today all coming up in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, it was a few hours ago now, but it was actually pleasant when I walked out the door this morning. I didn't feel like I was swimming through the air. Yeah, you know, that really came down with that northwesterly wind that blew in. It's a little bit drier air. We'll see a similar situation today, so we'll keep that on the low end at least for today and into tomorrow. Again, that change is coming up. All right, Lisa, thank you. 604 now, some people are demanding the Fargo Police Department release body cam video of Friday, Friday's deadly officer-involved shooting. 28-year-old Shane Netterville was shot by an officer as police say he was trying to drive away in a stolen van and then tried running over an officer. At a rally yesterday in downtown Fargo, Netterville's brother says he does not think that Shane would do anything like that. Do I think my brother would run over a cop? No, definitely not. However, a witness to Friday's incident says it appears that officers were about to be hit when the driver tried taking off from the scene. It made me scared, but I'm glad the police are okay because he quite killed him. He was about to run the police over. The officer who fired that shot on Friday, 11-year veteran Adam O'Brien, is on administrative leave while the North Dakota Bureau is investigating this. The Fargo Police Department policy manual discourages officers from shooting at a moving vehicle, calling it rarely effective. And they say officers should only shoot at moving vehicles when the officer believes there are no other reasonable means to avert an imminent threat. We hear your concerns and we understand your questions. And we seek the same answers that you do in terms of whether the use of force was justified or not. 
The chief says that this upcoming Thursday night's police oversight and advisory board meeting, they will take a deep dive into the FPD policies relevant to the shooting, and he encourages the public to watch that. Meanwhile, police also remind you to be on the lookout for Derek Stanley, who police say could provide vital information on this investigation. Stanley was one of only three people in the vehicle at the time of the shooting. He took off from the scene and is still on the loose. The Biden administration is now telling hospitals that they must provide abortion services if the life of the mother is at risk. It says procedures conducted under such circumstances would be protected under federal law, regardless of a state ban. The Department of Health and Human Services cited a federal law from 1985 that they say takes priority over state laws banning abortion. The directive is part of President Joe Biden's efforts to protect abortion access in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. A major court decision is seen as a win for abortion rights in Minnesota. A Ramsey County judge yesterday struck down several restrictions, including a 24-hour waiting period, parental notification to minors seeking an abortion, disclosure of certain information before that procedure, and law that says only doctors can provide an abortion. Caroline Cummings has the reaction. Today is a win in our state. Abortion rights advocates claiming victory after several abortion restrictions on the books blocked in state court, effective immediately. We are glad to see these unjust laws struck down. 27 years ago, the Minnesota Supreme Court in Doe v. Gomez ruled the state constitution protects the right to an abortion and that those protections are broader than those that were affirmed by Roe v. Wade. Ramsey County Judge Thomas Gilligan ruled these laws are at odds with that decision. My body, my choice. But now, in a post row America. Those who support abortion rights say this ruling is critical for access. Today is a victory um, for anybody seeking abortion care in Minnesota. And it comes at a time when Minnesota's protections for abortion are essential for people traveling as far as Texas and Missouri to get abortion care here. Anti-abortion rights group Minnesota Citizens Concern for Life called the decision extreme and that the blocked laws are common sense. In part saying, quote, even the U.S. Supreme Court under Roe v. Wade and subsequent decisions allowed these very modest types of laws. Yet today's ruling blocks them and prevents Minnesotans from enacting reasonable protections for unborn children and their mothers. The organization echoing other calls for the state to appeal the ruling. Attorney General Keith Ellison Monday afternoon said he hadn't yet read the 140 page decision. We will be taking a good look at it. Ellison says he personally believes in a woman's right to choose to have an abortion, but that as the attorney general, his job is to defend Minnesota's laws. He and other co-defendants in that case have not yet decided if they will seek an appeal. The issue of recreational marijuana in North Dakota could go on the ballot again. A group hoping to legalize recreational pot submitted a petition with more than 25,000 signatures to the Secretary of State's office yesterday, which is 10,000 more than they need for the November ballot. The Secretary of State's office has until August 15th to verify the signatures and determine whether that measure will then be placed on the ballot. In our schemes and ripoffs this morning, moving scams. The Fargo area is growing quickly with many people moving to that region every week. But one couple got a harsh welcome and they think it's a scam. The couple responded to an ad from a moving company called Final Destination Moving. But on moving day, movers from another company called Handle with Care Moving and Storage showed up. Once their items were loaded on the truck, the company demanded more money than what they originally quoted. But before they could decline that offer, their property was gone, leaving them in a battle then to get it back. Once they did, most were either missing or damaged, forcing that couple to replace the items. Police in DeKalb County, Georgia, say they have received more than 20 complaints about that specific moving company in the last two years. Still to come on the Valley today, the 70-year-old lifeguard who is saving pool hours for kids and families. But next, it's going to be a fairly pleasant day out there. You might want to make pool plans for later in the week, though. Lisa Green has your forecast.